right now. And you probably right now see the um, my presentation. It's okay. Yeah, everything is ready. Yes. Okay. Okay. I will start with the uh, today's lecture. The uh, that just focused on the um, hydrogen storage. But the um, you know that the uh, hydrogen storage is a uh, very related with the um, hydrogen production and the utilization. So I prepared the thirty five slides for today's lecture. Uh, the contents over here, so, so overview of hydrogen storage, and then I will move to the, um, the hydrogen absorption materials. Then is a uh, one of the um, physical uh, hydrogen storage method methods that is the the liquid hydrogen, and then I will finally just uh, introduce the chemical hydrogen storage uh, using the um, ammonia and LHC and methane over there. So, and then I will wrap up the, uh, today's lecture. And I wrote the, uh, the slide that was shown the, in the last class. You probably see the here part is the production part and here part is the uh, utilization part. So to connect these two, to start hydrogen production and hydrogen utilization, we have to consider the uh, just a middle part of the hydrogen storage and transportation. So right now, we have the too many uh, technologies for the, this, this approach. So first priority is the liquid hydrogen, and then probably ammonia and the LHC. So that would be introduced today. So anyway, it, this part is very important. In case of the domestic case, we just use the um, just tube trailer. However, if we don't have the, um, any abundant hydrogen source in domestic, and probably we have to import hydrogen overseas. In that case, the uh, high amount of the hydrogen, I mean the uh, high density of hydrogen is required for the efficient, tra efficient transportation. Go to the next slide. Uh, probably, I don't know, you may be familiar with the uh, just Korean car. Uh, this is the, uh, the Hyundai. And uh, this is the um, first, not not first, Mirai, the Toyota Mirai is the first uh, pure cell vehicle. The, this Nexo is the second pure cell vehicle. It's uh, right now is commercially available. And this Nexo vehicle has the, 135 kilowatt pure cell. And then you can see motor, the stack, the DC converter, hydrogen tank over here, and the high voltage battery over here. Here you can see the hydrogen tank. That is the enlarged at the bottom over here. This vehicle has a three tanks. These two of two tanks, and this is the kind of the auxiliary tank to maintain the uh, hydrogen boosting. So all total amount of the hydrogen in, in mass is over here, 6.33 kilogram. So that means in two point, about 2.1 kilogram per tank is stored in this vehicle. And then I have to state one more thing. The tank pressure is a 700 bar over there. Okay, using the this kilometer, the mileage, 96.2 kilometer per kilogram hydrogen, then this next of vehicles will run about 600 kilometer per one hydrogen storage, single hydrogen storage. So about six kilometers is required for the just one shot to, to drive the Nexo. And then we have to think about the um, just a commercial hydrogen transportation using the, um, the tank. So when a tube tra trailer transfers hydrogen at a scale of uh, 330 kilogram per pass, that is the um, right now the usual uh, the hydrogen mass for the um, probably many nations. That means 
full charge is possible for the only 50 vehicles. So one tube trailer from the, to the hydrogen production site to the hydrogen demanding site, only 50 big, the only hydrogen amount for the 50 vehicles is transferred. That means that we have to get the more efficient hydrogen storage method. So then you can see here, this is the, um, just the, the first trial for the hydrogen storage, compressed gas hydrogen, that is abbreviated CGH2, but the, this, the CGH2 has a very detrimental disadvantage such as low volumetric ten density. So we have to see the, uh, this density chart with respect to the pressure over here. So 200 bar, about 15 kilogram per cubic meter, and 450 bar is 28.3, and here 700 bar is 39.1. That all the values I'm now stating that is based on the um, 300 Kelvin, so the ambient temperature over here. Just look at the, this number. What about the liquid hydrogen? 71 gram per liter, that means 71 kilogram per cubic meter. What about the water? So 111 kilogram the hydrogen per cubic meter. So that means this compressed hydrogen gas even using the 700 bar is about the 40, here 71, the so, so difference is about the 30, and this 111, that is water, about the uh, so 80, uh, about the uh, 70 difference. So that means the compressed the hydrogen is not the good tool to deliver the hydrogen. So this is the, just a uh, just image for the, um, this, the advantage of the compressed hydrogen gas. So one bar is so 0.3 gram per liter, 150 bar, left cylinder case, so 10 gram per liter, and 30, 350 bar and 700 bar, only 28, only 40 gram per liter. So you can see the, at the bottom, so this, uh, this is a tube trailer. It's uh, about the 10 cylinder will be stacked in a tube trailer. Each cylinder has the volume of the about 2,000, 2,300 liter over here. And then, and then the calculate the mass of the hydrogen is about the 340 kilogram. That means this is the um, very similar value over here. So only 50 vehicles. This large just tube trailer will just transport only hydrogen of the, for the 50 vehicles. And then this is, is improved to the um, another cylinder type over here that has the uh, 450 bar. And then this is the smaller. So each cylinder has the 427 liter, then the about the 40, each cylinder will be stacked in, in, a, in a tube trailer. That means the about 500 kilogram. That means not less than 100 vehicles will be charged if we use the, um, this type four the cylinder. And then move to the next slide. So, so this is the compressed gas I introduced. Then many people worldwide just wanna move to the um, from the compressed gas from the another the storage technologies. First one is the liquid hydrogen. And right now, just BMW people are very interested in the, the cold or cryo compressed hydrogen, uh, hydrogen over here. And also, someone probably Lika, uh, is familiar to the answer, uh, material based hydrogen storage. So, MAP material or the liquid organic material or the hydride material, many different methodologies have been just uh, investigated so far in, in worldwide. So I will, I will introduce the, uh, the liquid hydrogen. I will, uh, these two things um, firstly, and then 
uh, we'll go, uh, first one is the absorption material. Yeah, absorption material and the liquid hydrogen and the other methodology. Okay, I already just introduced uh, this reference over here, ACS Energy Letters, uh, published in 2021. You can compare the, um, just the values, measures for the liquid hydrogen, methanol, MCH, methyl hexane, and ammonia. So all the liquid type over here. So liquid hydrogen, here the density 71 kilogram per cubic meter. What about the methanol? What about the MCH? What about the ammonia? It's very huge, just about the 800 kilogram per cubic meter. Okay. But the, uh, this is just pure hydrogen. But the, from the, these materials, we have to extract hydrogen from this material by chemical way. And then look at the uh, gravity metric energy density over here, just a megajoule per kilogram. So liquid hydrogen has the 120 megajoule per kilogram. However, methanol, MCH, and ammonia, all the uh, just these materials, the, uh, is barely less uh, gravity metric energy density. So that is also one of the big issue in this chemical hydrogen storage. And then I have to bring up the, the this diagram also. I mentioned earlier here, just liquid hydrogen over here and 700 bar compressed the hydrogen over here. And, and probably in the last class, I introduced these things. What about the, um, the methanol, MCH, ammonia? So methanol over here, liquid ammonia over here, and MCH over here. It's the, so probably you can see the answer. In terms of the volumetric density, the methanol ammonia are a little better than the liquid hydrogen and even the compressed hydrogen. However, these are things that have the um, lower gravity metric density. It's a um, that is uh, less than the, um, our uh, conventional fossil fuels. But anyway, probably it liquid hydrogen has a very uh, serious drawback for the transport uh, storage and transportation. So right now, many people are just uh, many people's interests are shifted from the, the liquid hydrogen to the liquid ammonia or methanol or MCH over here. And then I have to introduce the, um, this diagram also. I have, I have took, taken this diagram from the here, the MIT Technology Review in Germany. That is the um, published the, um, just, uh, about probably summer of the 2022. So you can see this compressed hydrogen and liquid hydrogen, ammonia and LOC. So these two candidates are compared in terms of the many aspects, the storage density. You can see over here, this arrow. So ammonia is the best. So 121 kilogram. Yeah, this is the best, just the, uh, just gravimetric hydrogen storage density. What about long term, long term, long distance cost over here? Still, this ammonia is the best because the um, just ammonia is right now well implemented in the in the commercial so and what about the efficiency over here so compressed hydrogen over here but the other things is are is uh, just putting together over here is about the uh, 65 to 75 percent efficiency compared to the um, just a uh, one just uh, idea just efficiency so this difference is not is not significant what about the self discharge here LOHC is number one compared to the uh, here liquid hydrogen over here so some of the liquid hydrogen will be released during the transportation so that is the, the problem of the liquid hydrogen. And over here, security. Ammonia is the worst over here. So the compressed hydrogen, 
this one is uh, is okay because the um, high pressure chamber is uh, much secured. What, however, if the um, this ammonia is uh, leaked in the atmosphere, some of the um, damage in the environment and also in the human being will occur. What about the purity, hydrogen purity? So look at here, compressed hydrogen is the best compared to the just ammonia. Ammonia, probably very little amount in the level of the PPM of the ammonia will remain in the, the hydrogen stream. Those very small amount of ammonia will attack the um, many infrastructures. So that is the um, just burden well, one of the burdens for the uh, ammonia transportation. What about the technology readiness level, TRL? So ammonia is a commercially available ammonia has the um, very high TRL. But the, um, right now, everything is moving to the um, just a technology TRL 7 to 8 right now. Okay. So based on the, this diagram, you probably just ask yourselves, what is the best one? Which one I have to select for the um, my nation, my country? What is the best technology? Probably if the ammonia is much, much available in Indonesia, you probably think about the um, just transportation and storage technique for the ammonia. However, in case of the South Korea, we don't have the ammonia. <laughs> we don't have the, any ammonia production plant okay that means that we have to import also what about the um, hydrogen compressed hydrogen liquid hydrogen for the compressed hydrogen we are now using just the uh, byproduct hydrogen from the steel plant and the refinery plant so so that means the um, compressed hydrogen is right now is well established in south korea however LH2, liquid hydrogen. In that case, we need very, very high purity of hydrogen. So we don't have it. That means we need to import. So LHC, we have the LHC material in just uh, produced from the uh, refinery industry, but you know the, uh, this material is, is not cheap, it's expensive. So we have to consider many aspects of the um, just hydrogen storage methods. So right now, this year, I think I cannot pick up the, uh, who is the king for the hydrogen storage. However, probably five years later, probably oh. one of the methods I introduced today will be just a chosen for the um, just a commercial hydrogen transportation and storage. Okay, this is the final the, the final slide for the introduction part. Here, one of the example. This is marine transportation for the uh, Japan case. Here, just brown coal that is available in Australia, and then just a one just refinery company from the Japan making this uh, gasification plant using the brown coal. And then gas will be refined over here, and then will be just transported it to the, the port, the marine port. And then that port is a hydrogen liquefied, and then that liquefied hydrogen will be landed. And then right now you can see the uh, about 9,000 kilometer, just the liquid hydrogen will be transported in the sea. And then final destination, is uh, you can see over here, Gobe Airport Island over here. Then that liquefied hydrogen transferred from the Australia will be released at the hydrogen demanding sites. And this is the uh, just project of the Hystra, the Hydrogen Energy Supply Chain Technology Research Association. And you can see over there in this project, uh, many companies are participating. One of the company is the Yang Kawasaki Heavy Industries. He, this company has a very good knowledge and technique to make manufacture the, uh, these 
just a marine vehicle, just a shipping. So this Swiss frontier over here, you can see tank capacity. Yes, here you can see this is a tank over there. Tank capacity is there 1,250 cubic meter. So that is the uh, about uh, 88,000 kilograms per one shipping will be transferred from Australia to Japan. So compared to the digit I introduced before, here 340 and about 500 kilometer is the just about 150 times higher uh, compared to the uh, just the uh, domestic just a land just tube trailer. So this technique. This uh, shipping method is very, very not required if the, um, just, uh, one of the nation has the, uh, no just, uh, hydrogen infrastructure and also enough the hydrogen production plant. So we have to think about this kind of the overseas transportation. And then I'm now moving to hydrogen absorption to, for, for discussion, discussing the hydrogen absorption, I have to introduce first the two Mm, methods such as the uh, physics option and chemistry option. Probably in the chemistry department, uh, probably may, uh, the class of the physical chemistry, PCHEM, probably you guys have already enough the knowledge on the, these two technologies, just physics option and chemistry option. So physics option is the uh, just typical of a multi-layer option. So we will use the uh, BET isosome, brown amyl tallow isosome. And for the chemi absorption, the definitely monolayer absorption will occur. So in this case, we will use the Langmuir isosome to interpret the, um, how much of the hydrogen is absorbed and the, how much of the um, absorbent, the solid absorbent is necessary to, to, to calculate the, the hydrogen demanding. And any other information will be just yeah, over here. You can uh, just understand these things just uh, the later after this class. Okay, so the so material is very, very important. If the chemical chemistry option is uh, strong, that means yeah, many just, uh, just our hydrogen molecules will be absorbed on monolayer of the at the surface of the solid. However, if we want to just release the hydrogen from the dead surface, it is necessary to use the uh, high energy to, for the breaking down the um, chemical absorption bond. What about the physical absorption? Physical absorption is good compared to the chemical absorption in terms of the hydrogen release. However, this physical absorption, the molecule interaction is very low. So that means the, um, we cannot get the um, high amount of the hydrogen solved at the surface uh, material surface. And many people probably in about in 2000s, uh, here many people just investigated what kind of the material is required for the hydrogen storage. And look at here. So this is the diameter over here. The cylinder diameter, just all the pore diameter over here, and this is, this is a slit diameter here. And after the calculation about the, these two matters, the slit pore is better than the nanotube. Yeah. After this publication, the carbon nanotube, CNT, is the answer so abundant in the um, hydrogen storage. Oh, just on the contrary, the CNT right now is a has been using for the uh, just a cylinder material. And then this is the uh, interlayer distance in the pore. So in case of the seven, 14 and 20 angstroms of a pore, you can see over here, seven angstrom is much better than the larger pores. And other mathematical calculation, the theoretical calculation show that the, uh, about the six angstrom to 7.5 angstrom, those the um, pore diameter is very 
accessible for the uh, hydrogen storage, high hydrogen storage capacity. So using the, this the concept, this information, many people just investigated the storage material. First one is the first one I have to introduce is the, the nanoporous carbon. And then you probably see the um, so this is the room temperature over here, the 77 Kelvin over here. So as you may know well, just a low temperature is much better than the room temperature for the um, hydrogen storage. So very less at RT, and very high at 77 Kelvin. But you know that yeah, to get the 77 Kelvin, we need to very, very good mechanical equipment to get the answer 77 Kelvin, okay? And see the here, there's an amorphous CNT over here. And this is one of the material, porous material, CMK3 over here. And pure single carbon nanotube over here. And porous carbon over here. And activated carbon over here. So activated carbon is, is very commercially available. So this commercially available activated carbon has enough the hydrogen storage capacity compared to the, uh, the CNT and the very artificial just a carbon, porous carbon material. That means the, uh, many people just investigated activate carbon for hydrogen storage. But right now it's a uh, it's not the good tool. It is not considered to be a good tool for the hydrogen storage. And you can see this is a graphene oxide, the GO. Uh, this material is also tried, was also tried for the hydrogen storage, but uh, you can see over here, 77 Kelvin is 1.28% using the chill seven bar over here. So here, this is a 77 Kelvin and then activated carbon is about 48% storage. So this, the Another type of the carbon, the graphene oxide, is not the optimal for the uh, hydrogen storage. Then many people move to the uh, just zeolite material because zeolite is well known to be micropores and crystalline aluminosilicate. That zeolite has been used the, uh, uh, has been used as a catalyst for the refining industry. So zeolite A. Geolite X, Y, geolite low. So those the um, geolite are what were tried for the hydrogen storage at the 77 cabin over here. But the, you can see over here, just compared to the carbon materials, just the empty diamond over here. Compared to the carbon materials, geolite has a just low amount of the less than 2.8% at the 77 Kelvin and 100 bar. So many things, just what about the trying, just the, um, the high surface area geolite? Probably if we can use the high surface area, area material, can we get the, um, just the higher hydrogen uh, absorption? So you can see over here about the 331, 100 square meter per gram and 2200 square meter per gram over there using the geolite geolite like carbon material so this material uh, was synthesized using the just a uh, geolite as a template and then put the carbon materials and the pyrolyte then final material is the uh, geolite the template carbon this material showed the um, very high hydrogen uptake at the 770 Kelvin and even low pressure of 20 bar. So someone trying right now trying to use the, uh, this kind of the uh, carbon material, but the, uh, you know, zeolite is a template. That means zeolite is a sacrificial agent. So that means finally, this material is very expensive. And then this MOF I have to introduce, this metal organic framework material. This is highly, highly porous, micro-porous material. So right now about the, yeah, probably larger than 200 
the materials for the MOF class has have been just introduced in the in the world in the in academia. So you can see over here 4.5 weight percent at 770 Kelvin and 1.28 percent at room temperature only. So those materials are very useful if we use the um, 77 Kelvin for the hydrogen storage. However, if you have to use room temperature for hydrogen storage, this material is not good. And also this, uh, this large scale production of the MOIF materials are very tedious. So someone already probably just BASF in Germany, that company uh, succeeded in production of the, the large scale production of the MOF5 over here, um, but it's not the, right now, it's a uh, commercially available the, in terms of the just the uh, storage technology. Material is available. However, that storage method is not feasible in terms of the economics. And then other class is the, which is the um, COP, COBOL, covalent bonded organic framework. You can see over here, so all the materials are comprised of the, um, these uh, uh, monomer unit here. So this carboxyl acid part that is a, that is a linker to make a porosity. And, but you know, the, um, all the measurement was done at 777 Kelvin. So at this temperature, those materials are very good. However, if we try to use the room temperature using the, these materials, we do not just get the um, very, very good the reported value. So here, in case of the hydrogen sorption material, you know, here this is sorption temperature. So MOF over here. Yeah, any other materials over here. And temperature for the hydrogen release is also room temperature, it's good. But the, um, you know, we need to use the um, very low temperature for hydrogen sorption. So USDOE just uh, was pursuing just the, what about the other technology like chemical hydride and the metal hydride. You know, you can see the uh, high temperature is required for the hydrogen release, but uh, you can see it's very high hydrogen capacity is, is uh, possible. So probably 2000 to 2010 about, those in those periods, many people investigated just a uh, sorption material. But after that, after, since 2010, just people is moving to the uh, this metal hydride and chemical hydride material. Even just the uh, iron liquid materials are used for the hydrogen, are tested for the hydrogen storage. But I think the um, right now the just the present situation uh, is not the uh, op optimal. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, for the hydrogen absorption material has a very serious drawback if to get the um, higher so the hydrogen storage capacity. Then probably so the, just liquid hydrogen is the hot issue in from the 2015 to present. Because we have the already very good just production and infrastructure for the liquid hydrogen. So you can see over here, the air liquid, air products, Linde and Proxair, every many companies are in just the, um, mm, just working on the um, liquid hydrogen storage. And also you can see over here, this digit, uh, this is a sum, summation of the, all the capacity. So 290 ton per day, not kilogram. So this scale is possible. However, you can see over here, just the total capital investment is the um, right here. So about the six hundred million dollar is required for the two hundred ton per day for liquid hydrogen. 
So I think the, um, most countries cannot use the liquid hydrogen. This capital investment is mandatory to, to install the um, so liquid hydrogen um, storage equipment. And also, liquid hydrogen has a very serious drawback. Here, 350 bar and 700 bar, and this is the liquid hydrogen over here. And this is the actual, and this is theory. So you can compare the um, actual and theory, the values in terms of the energy consumed for compression or cooling hydrogen over here. So 300 bar, the actual, the theory, though the difference between the, these two things are not sig significant. However, you can see over here, liquid hydrogen. This is the um, theory. It's so about the 10% just, uh, of the hydrogen just, uh, energy will be consumed for the liquefaction. However, this is the um, actual value. So what is meaning? So about 20 to 40% of energy of hydrogen will be just gone in the liquefaction. So that means the about 60 to 80% of hydrogen energy is available if we have if we use the hydrogen liquefaction, just a liquid hydrogen technology. So in terms of the thermodynamic aspects, liquid hydrogen is not considered to be feasible. So then someone just uh, argued that probably other hydrogen might be better than the liquid hydrogen. That is here, just cryo compressed hydrogen. This part is the uh, compressed gas hydrogen and this part liquid hydrogen. And this is the uh, cryo compressed hydrogen. So X axis is the temperature and Y axis density. So all the just curves based on the just pressure. So 150, 250 to the uh, 700 bar over here. You can just compare the uh, density. What about here, 208 Kelvin and uh, 700 bar. The density, hydrogen density is 40 kilogram per liter over here. However, if we use the, this point, just cryo compressed the hydrogen at 300 bar at 38 Kelvin will show us the 80 gram per liter. It's a double up compared to the compressed hydrogen. What about the liquid hydrogen? Just this is the answer, a pure liquid hydrogen. It's a, usually just a liquid hydrogen one bar over here. But the less than three, 33 cabin, so see here, the so cryo compressed hydrogen is also better than the um, just liquid hydrogen over here. So this was found by the um, just BMW people. So BMW people uh, just uh, pursue to get the um, liquid hydrogen. During the, that experiment, probably just compressed the hydrogen will show us the uh, much higher density of a hydrogen for the just a storage tank. Then this one, this is the cryo compressed tank over here. This is the uh, one of the just a liquid hydrogen, the subcooled liquid sub subcooled liquid over here. Uh, it's a very different temperature and pressure. So subcooled liquid, look at the temperature over here, about two. 28 Kelvin and uh, 116 bar over here. That give, will give us the uh, 62 kilogram per cubic meter for the hydrogen density. However, cryo compressed one is a much higher pressure, 350 to 400 bar, but temper temperature is higher than subcooled liquid. Even 
the higher temperature is used, the hydrogen density is, is equal to 72 kilogram per cubic meter. So this bar chart shows us the very clear picture. This is this quite compressed hydrogen. It's much better than the just the compressed hydrogen because you can see compared the and the uh, pressure, 300 bar and 350, 700 bar. So smaller pressure is possible to get the higher storage density. And just compare the, uh, just the subcooled liquid hydrogen or the pure liquid hydrogen, you can see the temperature, a little bit higher temperature. So in terms of the economics, probably this biocompressed hydrogen is better than compressed gas and the pure hydrogen and also subcooled liquid. So many automaker company is, are just uh, looking at the, uh, this biocompressed hydrogen for the future hydrogen tra transportation. Even in the, for the pure cell vehicle, this cryo-compressed hydrogen tank is, is a very better tool uh, for the um, just a real situation. Okay, and then I'm now moving to port, uh, part four, the chemical hydrogen storage. This part consists of three things. First one is the LHC, second is the ammonia, and the last thing is the methane. Okay, here, this is the LHC. So LHC, the, this concept is based on the um, just chemical reaction, such as the hydrogenation for hydrogen storage and dehydrogenation for hydrogen extraction. Okay, so here, this is the um, just, uh, enough renewable energy is provided at that site water will be electrolyzed to produce the um, just the uh, green hydrogen over here. That green hydrogen will be charged to this LHC material using the hydrogenation reaction. Okay. Then the hydrogen rich material will be stored and transported and distributed. At the hydrogen demanding site, LHC will be just uh, decomposed to release the hydrogen via hydrogenation reaction. So after this reaction, just, uh, just the hydrogen, just release the hydrogen will be charged into the our just vehicles. And then remaining material is hydrogen material. That hydrogen material will be stored and transported into the hydrogen just the uh, supplying sites that give will give the um, very cheap hydrogen and this is the um, just the cycle so hydrogenation dehydrogenation those reactions are mandatory for working on the uh, LHC materials and then this is the um, slide showing the um, so, what kind of the LOHC have been introduced so far? The first one is the um, this one, the toluene. Probably every people knows about the toluene. Toluene will be hydrogenated methylcyclohexane. And this methylcyclohexane will be dehydrogenated back to toluene. So these two reactions will takes place for the LHC concept. This concept was introduced Chiyoda Corporation in Japan. And this has the um, about the 6.1 weight percent of a hydrogen, gravimetric hydrogen density. If I remember correctly, this concept was introduced about 2002 or 2003. So 20 years passed, and then right now, Chioda is with the um, so along with the um, other, many other just, uh, industries, uh, is right now just transporting 
hydrogen from the Brunei to the Japan. And then air products. This is the liquid hydrogen company. And the Areva in France, that is the nuclear company. These two components were collaborated to use the, um, this LH material. So this is an ethyl carbazole. This is the hydrogen rich N ethyl carbazole. So we call the, um, this material NEC. So, and also this is the second generation. Why these, these, the, these people just um, focused on the, this material rather than this toluen MCH pair? Because the dehydrogen reaction is the um, endothermic reaction in the thermodynamics. That means the um, high temperature is necessary, required for the complete conversion. So if nitrogen, this heteroatom is incorporated into the molecular structure, the temperature for the dehydration reaction can be lowered. In case of the methylcyclohexane dehydrogenation, we need the, about the 350 degrees C for the full conversion. However, in case of the NEC, uh, if I remember correctly, about 240 to 250 degrees C is enough for the full conversion of the hydrogen rich to hydrogen molecule. However, this material has a serious problem. After the hydrogenation, this material is not the liquid phase at ambient temperature. At ambient temperature, this one is a solid. Just uh, after heating the, this material up to 70 degrees C, this material is transformed into the liquid phase. So that means the um, additional energy is required to just melt down the um, solid NEC to liquid form. And also, you can see over here, ethyl group is linked to the nitrogen atom. At about 200 degrees C, this ethyl group was cracked, thermally cracked. So that means this material is not thermally stable. So about 2011, in those period, this material was abandoned. Then about the two, yeah, since 2012, uh, one company in Germany, which is the hydrogenous technology, this company invented with the help of the, uh, one of the professors in Germany, that, that is the uh, Peter Bache site, that company just uh, patented this material, the dibenzotolene, or, and then this material is hydrogenated, this H, just, uh, H18 dibenzotolene. This material is commercially available because we are now using this material for the uh, just heat exchanger. For heat exchange, this material is very thermally stable. So that means this material has a, just a thermal stability problem, but the, this material doesn't have the thermal stability problem. So using this material, just hydrogenous technology just demonstrated the, um, all the just, uh, necessary relevant issues in the in the plant. And then right now is a hydrogenous technology is a very big company in the this uh, LOHC uh, trans storage and transportation. And this is first generation. This this material, uh, you know, the uh, was just uh, just uh, successfully synthesized by micro okay so this is the first generation anyway aohc is the high boiling organic molecule that can be easily and reversibly hydrogenated and dehydrogenated and this is the answer uh, chiodas plan you know the hydrogen supply chain business that project is called the spara hydrogen spara is the 
the Spanish wording, uh, that is the just uh, meaning of hope. So it's a hope project. Okay. So here, this is the pilot plant over here. The, I visited this site for the uh, just uh, looking at the, uh, this plant site and dehydrogenation part and here hydrogenation part. And then I mentioned earlier, this is Brunei over here. And this is the Japan. And you can see 2019, just the December, just the MCH, just a hydrogen charged tolerant that it was transported from the Brunei to Japan. And 2020, that hydrogen separation was done by Kawasaki Group. And then that released hydrogen was used for the uh, gas turbine over there. And then Toluan, just the, uh, after hydrogen released, the Toluan was back to the uh, Brunei site. So those was already demonstrated. And then I heard that the uh, just Japanese people right now is uh, has a bunch of the calculation in terms of the economics. So which part is a burden in the whole cycle of the uh, this LH concept? So definitely, the uh, dehydrogen part is the problem. So this is the answer uh, of my my work over here. So we uh, we investigated the LH material over eight years, and then we published the um, just a uh, very good material here. There's a parameter range tolerance over here. And then it's a, it's a mixture of the um, parametric engine rich mixture and also the um, heterolytic just LOHC material over here. And the many catalytic materials are just uh, just reported. So if anyone in this Zoom session are interested in this work, anyone can just uh, just email me. I will I will just uh, just uh, just introduce the uh, my work or in more detail later. Okay, this is the, uh, our continuous reactor. So we checked the um, activity and stability of the dehydrogenation catalyst. So this is furnace, this is GC, and this is the um, just, uh, our feed. And then probably where is the MFC? Yeah, here is the MFC. So whole the system was the, um, just built three, three, four years ago. And then we got the, this is very recent data. Just so, uh, our just, uh, level three, just uh, brand three carries has shown the um, 300 hours stability, uh, showing the um, just conversion uh, of the uh, 90, over 99% and also tolerance selectivity 99.9%. And then the MCH conversion uh, was decreased to 0.5% percent after 300 hours. Anyway, for the LHCC, you know, the um, material and DR using carries and reactor, those parts are very, very important. So if anyone interested in the LHCC concept, you have to pick up, select um, which part you want to you wanna attack. So material or just the dehydrogenation catalyst or the reactor. So I recommend probably dehydrogenation is necessary, not only for the um, LHC, but also for the um, many kinds of the chemical reactions. So catalyst materials are also useful for other chemical reactions. So probably I think the, um, you can if you participate in the average concept, so your character material and your character system will be extended to other systems. And this is the uh, just the last slide of the average part. So right now, so many people want to just uh, reduce the um, cost of the average material and also get the sustainability. So here, so life cycle. Mm, light cycle oil, LCO, and PFO, the pyrus pure oil, those two fuels are just byproducts in the refinery industry. So 
these are very cheap. So, and also very aromatic rich. So using the this LCO and PFO, uh, someone is now looking at the answer, how to use these materials for the LOS concept. One more thing here, plastic waste. That also uh, published in the 2023 in the Angevant Chemi. So plastic waste material after pyrolysis. So that pyrolysis waste will be used, can be used for the uh, LOSC. And one more thing here, right now the LOSC people desire to implement the LOSC concept into the just vehicle. So this is the hydrogen engine over here. This is the LOSC tank over here. And this is the kind of the, the converter over here. This is the, that means the, this is the dehydrogenation reactor. So in case of a tank, uh, in case of a truck hole here, this is the, um, there's a power train over here. This is the dehydrogen reactor. This is the tank. Loaded, always loaded, unloaded hydrogen. Those two tanks are necessary. So when compared with the um, diesel, um, one people in the MIT, at MIT just to calculate the um, economics of LHC compared to diesel. And then CO2 emission is will be reduced by the, about the 71% using the, this concept for the just the implementation of a real just a hydrogen peak. And then I'm now moving to the ammonia. But yeah, I think that I introduced a little bit information about the ammonia in the last class. So have a wash process using the hydrogen and nitrogen, the ammonia will be produced. And then ammonia has the two different applications. First one is the direct use. Yeah, ammonia can be used directly for the uh, just direct combustion engine and also pure cell or furnace right here. In the other application, so the ammonia will be cracked into the hydrogen. That hydrogen is just supplied to the uh, pure cell vehicle that is already just uh, available and also power generation and also pure cells. No, any other applic any other applications. So ammonia can be used itself and also the hydrogen form. So many people thought that yeah, ammonia is much better than the just pure hydrogen because the yeah, ammonia itself is also fewer for the yeah, other uh, applications. And also, you know that the yeah, ammonia is right now is being used as a fertilizer in many countries so this is um, this ammonia is right now very cheap right now and also has a very good infrastructure for the transportation is available so some maritime vehicles and also the trailer over here so many kind of transportation are very easy However, we have to think about the ammonia synthesis because the yeah, harbor wash process, let me, yeah, harbor wash process is very, very ridiculous because, you know, here about 450, 400 to 550 degrees C, and then you look at the, the pressure, 300, 400 bar system pressure. These conditions is usual for the high pressure harbor wash process, which has the answer to TRL9. But you know, the, um, this is not the good economics. So someone just pushing the people to get the uh, more efficient harbor wash process using the observant enhancing method. So look at the, the system pressure. These pressures is significantly decreased to the 10 to 30 bar and also a little bit lower temperature. So right now the harbor wash process is, uh, is uh, right now just uh, pressure to, to get the uh, 
more much reduced uh, energy consumption to get the good uh, economics. And look at the, this one here, conventional harbor wash process, energy consumption, just the kilowatts, kilowatt hour per kilogram ammonia. So here, if we have the um, just larger ammonia capacity, the energy consumption will be lower, getting lower here. But this is the uh, thermodynamic minimum energy consumption over here. That is also very similar to the um, just liquid hydrogen. In case of liquid hydrogen, for liquefaction, we have the um, just uh, energy for the liquefaction. So in case of ammonia, ammonia synthesis is a problem. So if the if we have the very economical ammonia synthesis plant and technology, probably just the yeah, downstream part, so the storage and transportation, and also the ammonia combustion, ammonia, this part is very, very close to, to commercialization, I think. And this one, I brought up this one again here for the ammonia case, so electrolyzer, and also uh, this part, this is ammonia cracking part over here. And then this is the compression and the hydrogen refueling station. And look at the here, SOC, MPM. And in this uh, article, the authors mentioned it has a limited role as a hydrogen carrier due to the large energy requirement for cracking and the compressing at the customer end. This is the uh, situation of ammonia. So if ammonia is linked to the SOFC, probably we will have the um, just a little bit higher just power to power energy consumption, about 25 to 37. But uh, you know, here PAMFC, in case of the PAMFC, just the efficiency of the power to power, just less, less about the you twenty know, percent. That means about eighty percent of energy is gone during the uh, the start of to the final end. So this is the uh, one of the dilemma in the ammonia part. And I have to mention the um, this the uh, ammonia cracking mechanism. So this is the um, just reaction. So two moles of ammonia will be released into one mole of nitrogen and the three mole of hydrogen. So this is this reaction is a volume expansion and also and the summing over here. So nitrogen will be absorbed at the, the carriage surface and then NH absorbed NH will be just cleaved into the um, NH2 and absorbed hydrogen and another hydrogen absorbed hydrogen species will be made at the surface. Then finally, just absorb the nitrogen species and the hydrogen species will be just uh, gathered molecularly, then detached from the, just uh, dissolved from the catalyst surface. So these eight elementary tasks for the ammonia cracking. And then many people investigate which one is the rate determining step, step. And in case of the, these metals, so lodium, iridium, palladium, platinum, copper, in case of those material, the, the metals here, ammonia absorption, just absorbed ammonia, is the well, first cleavage of the absorbed ammonia. That is the uh, RDS, rate determining step. However, if we use very most active ruthenium, nickel, cobalt, or the iron, here, step A, nitrogen desorption is the rate determined step. So how to get the um, just, uh, just, uh, uh, active, uh, no, how to get the, um, this nitrogen desorption very actively? So that depends on the, uh, what kind of character material is used. So then 
I just summarized the you know, audience uh, uh, reports for the ammonia cracking. I did not, I will not introduce the many, everything in this slide, but uh, you can see many approach for the current development development is what is has been pursuing right now. Okay, so alumina based one, silica based one, carbon support, MGO, alkali metal adopting, the layers of oxide supported, perovskite, many, many materials, character materials are used for the ammonia cracking. But important thing is the uh, just high dispersion of active matter, just well dispersing the active matter is, is of prime importance. Then next importance is the um, electron transfer from the support to active matter. That is called the uh, metal support interaction. So metal support interaction is the um, plays the um, um, crucial role in the uh, just uh, the high act to obtaining high activity of the ammonia cracking catalyst. So if anyone in this Zoom session are interested in the uh, just, uh, just ammonia cracking, just to focus on concentrate on the uh, just the uh, material. So probably support very, very important rather than the um, active matter because the uh, active matter, just window of active matter is very, right now it's very narrow because of the many, many research and development. So ruthenium, nickel, cobalt, iron, those are the um, just candidate for the active matter. However, support material, I think yeah, we have the much, much room to attack the, um, the support materials for ammonia cracking. And then this is the last topic of the just part four, chemical hydrogen storage, the methane. This slide I already introduced, but yeah, this one is very important because someone know about that the um, CO, the carbon monoxide, is the um, just a major source for the methane synthesis. But in case of the sustainability, we have to use the CO2, not CO. So what about the um, activating CO2 to, to produce the methane? So probably we have to think about this thermodynamics. So this is a CO and CO2. This is the pure CO2. Here, this is the purple line. This is pure CO. And every calculation in thermodynamics is based on the hydrogen to carbon is the three. Okay, so this this reaction is the um, exothermic. So starting from the 400 Kelvin to 600 Kelvin, you can see the uh, methanol yield is decreasing. So like this way. And that depends on the, um, you can see the composition of the carbon sources. So if we have the uh, pure CO2 for methanol synthesis, you can see this is the equilibrium methanol yield. So this equilibrium methanol is the, the lowest one. So in industry, usually they use the um, this this one, one to two here. This ratio is very good for the methanol synthesis. So this line you can see over here, this line is the industrial just methanol synthesis catalyst. So about about two hundred fifty degrees C. And also the, about 200 bar, yeah, those, um, mm, mm, the system temperature and pressure are working on for the um, industrial methanol synthesis catalyst material. However, if we want to use the um, pure CO2, same temperature and same pressure, we will get to this one. This is the um, just, um, methanol yield in thermodynamics. If we want to get the, the same equivalent to methanol synthesis yield, probably we go to right here, this point. Then that means you get the, this temperature. Yeah, it's very lower. It's about the 100 degrees C is lower. 
but you know, there is no chaotic material. At you know, working at the, this temperature and pressure. So that means yeah, probably in in the in the line of the reactor, some of the CO2 should be changed into the CO using the reverse water gas shift to reaction. I introduced already water gas shift to reaction. So CO and water just to change to the CO2 and hydrogen, right? So CO2 and hydrogen, if this mixture is fast for the methanol synthesis, we have to use the reverse water gas shift to reaction for methanol synthesis to get the, the optimal ratio, optimal composition of CO and CO2. This is very, very important. And then this is the answer. So my my slide, my work, my research here. So copper zinc, copper zinc aluminum, copper zinc zirconium. Yeah, those are were investigated in in my lab. And then high surface area, so zinc oxide SMSI and defect and steps. Those concept properties are very very cr critical for the methanol synthesis activity. And however. If we put the um, four component, copper, zinc, aluminum, zirconium, the bulk methanol TOF, that is the productivity, that productivity is very the same, very similar. So I think the um, in case of methanol synthesis, catalyst is ready. But the, you know, this one, can we use the um, pure CO2 for methanol synthesis? That is the big issue in methanol synthesis. And then this is the final slide for the methanol part. I'm bringing up the um, just, uh, one of the slides from the DMV for the uh, International Maritime Organization, which is the IMO. IMO just um, published the, um, one brochure, one just the, um, uh, their report for the um, Maritime forecast to 2050 energy transition outlook. This is the IMO ambitions, and this is decarbonization by 2050. Last year, IMO decided to just focus on the, this one, not the IMO ambition. So it's a full decarbonization by 2050. And you can see the, the 12 scenarios over here. Four bio, four electro, four fossil and blue part over here. And then I compare the all the digit in all the every scenario for the this the decarbonization by 2050, then probably bio is necessary. Here, bio MGO, MGO is the marine grade oil, bio MGO, bio LNG, bio ethanol. You can see the green bars over here and over here. So there is a, I think the enough sufficient loom to to use the biofuels in the maritime because, and also here, this is the blue part, the electro fuels, the electro marine grade oil, electro LNG, electro ammonia, electro methanol, those are e-fuels. So e-fuels over here. Even if even if the e-fuels is used for the uh, these uh, scenario 17 to 20, so very low electro and low electro cases, but you can see still the option of the biofuels in these scenarios. So they concluded for the um, maritime because probably we have to mix up just the necessary fuels in about 2015. So biofuel has a, a little bit higher fractions of the energy necessary and also the e-fuels also good option. And then this is the final slide of today's lecture. So you can see this is physical to chemical transition. So compressed hydrogen, liquid hydrogen, those are the physical methodology for the hydrogen um, storage and transport. Right now, 
many companies are focusing on the on the, uh, the storage tank. So what kind of materials are very stable for their high pressure system? And I introduced this one, the ammonia and LHC also. And right now I have one thing to be added in this slide here, VHTR, just very high temperature reactor. This is to work with the um, just nuclear energy. In case of the South Korea, we have the a little bit just a uh, just uh, nuclear energy to be used for the hydrogen production. So, but you know, this if this reactor is is in operation, we will have the um, bunch of the hydrogen. Then enough the hydrogen storage tanks are required. But the um, just a compressed hydrogen, liquid hydrogen. I think the um, this technology, just physical hydrogen storage methodology, are not just the um, just uh, connectable to the um, this VHTR. So I think the uh, ammonia, all the LHC, all the methanol, those chemical hydrogen storage should be connected with the um, just the uh, large scale hydrogen production. I think. 11.22, so thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Professor So, for uh, the nice lecture. So uh, we will go through the question and answer session. So probably for the students who will uh, would like to ask Professor So, about this topic about hydrogen storage, maybe you can raise uh, a hand, raise hand in directions, so we can uh, see. Okay. I have to mention one thing more. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Yes. Because the, um, I know that the, uh, many students are undergraduate. Probably my the <laughs> contents of my slide probably very difficult to understand. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, yeah. I want to apologize to <laughs> many people for the answers, a very difficult concept and very difficult slide. Okay. No, uh, it's very uh, easy to understand, Professor. Oh, I mean, for me, but hopefully for all the students, because uh, here in, the, the, in this class, we have in the third year students, uh, they already uh, uh, took a class, the physical chemistry class about the adsorption process, phase adsorption and chemistry adsorption process. But maybe yes, the technology, the technology is quite new in Indonesia. So yeah, probably the, for that part. So uh, we have uh, already have one question, Professor So from Farah Marcella. Yeah. Yes, go okay. ahead, Farah. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Dr. Young for the insightful lecture class. I am Farah, I want to ask you a question regarding the hydrogen storage. Uh, in terms of scalability and infrastructure requirements, uh, between methanol-based or ammonia-based hydrogen production, which method is better or more practical for widespread adoption? Thank you. Methanol and ammonia, two, two things. Yes. It's quite a difficult question. Uh, I'm I'm just the, um just explaining to about the um, Korea situation. This is very lessonable because the, um right now South Korea doesn't have any any plant for the methanol synthesis and also ammonia synthesis. Why? Because the the process is very very serious and also economics is very low because you know the for methanol synthesis we have to use the very high pressure is about the about the 150 bar to 20 bar those bar is, uh, is necessary and then one more thing methanol also need to use the um, the hydrogen the hydrogen also supplied for the methanol synthesis so those is a problem. So I heard from the, my seniors that the uh, 
probably 30 years ago, we have the methanol synthesis plant we had. But the, at, at some times for the um, oil crisis, then the that plant was abandoned in Korea. What about the ammonia? Same situation. Ammonia, you know, the, is a very good chemical for the fertilizer. So if the agricultural industry is very strong in, in a certain nation, probably ammonia synthesis plant should be should be built in that nation, that country. But that is the real situation? No. <laughs> Why? Why the people did not build, build the ammonia synthesis plant? Because I mentioned earlier that, let me go to the slide. Oh, probably here, this one. You know the, uh, okay, nitrogen. We have to get collect the nitrogen from the air using the air separation unit. Okay, and then nitrogen will be used for the ammonia. What about the oxygen? After air separation unit, oxygen is also co-product. So that means the oxygen should be used for the other applications. But the, um, you know, the, uh, in the many, many chemical industry, oxygen is not, the, not desirable just, uh, gases because of the explosion. And also ammonia, hydrogen is also necessary. So ammonia case, methanol case, all the um, economics depends on how cheap hydrogen is produced in, in the nation or at the company. So right now, but the situation is uh, just uh, changed right now. So someone mentioned earlier, probably one month earlier, that at that time, they think the company probably should focus on the um, methane, not the ammonia. Probably ammonia has a, one issue in the safety. However, methanol is a no safety issue. So probably if the, we think about the long-term business for the hydrogen economy, probably rather than ammonia, methanol has a much better just the issues in the, in the life cycle of hydrogen. It, oh, is okay. it enough explanation? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Yang. Your has given me a clear understanding. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Farah. Next is Fatia Najla. Go ahead. Thank you. For, okay. Thank you for your presentation, Professor. So, uh, I'm Fatia. I want to ask about the hydrogen storage. Uh, how long can the hydrogen be stored? And is there any chance that the hydrogen alters into the other forms or it decreases in quantity when, when it's distorted? Thank you. Sorry about that. The, is a, your voice is a, is a, a little bit is a, just a small, so I cannot hear perfectly. Ah, yeah, I want to ask about uh, how long can be, uh, the hydrogen be stored? And is there any chance that the hydrogen alters into the other form or it decreases in quantity when it's stored? Mm. Ah, that also a difficult question <laughs> because yeah, the, that question depends on the the response to the that question depends on the uh, what is the uh, hydrogen storage technology. Okay, look at the uh, liquid hydrogen. In the in the in case of liquid nitrogen, there is absolutely boil up gas because the um, you know the um, that's the tank just containing the liquid hydrogen will be exposed to the ambient temperature. I mean, the um, just atmosphere. So that is the ambient temperature. So some of the, um, the liquid hydrogen will be just gasified. And that means that gasified hydrogen will just induce the um, so increasing the system pressure. So we have to open the just a small hole to maintain the, um, the pr system pressure. So we call the dead released gas boil up gas. That means just during the transportation and storage of the liquid hydrogen, we 
we have the um, a little bit lower amount of the hydrogen compared to the, um, the initial hydrogen. So that is the one issue in case of the uh, liquid hydrogen. What about the DRS? What about the chemical hydrogen storage? So ammonia, methanol, and average, everything has a, a little problem. So stored, just uh, transported during the this period, storage and transportation, these are chemically stable. However, these chemical hydrogen storage just needs kind of a conversion technology to synthesize it and to crack it, crack it to the hydrogen. At that conversion process, some of the just uh, the reactant will remain. I mean, they are unconverted, or some molecules will be cracked to other chemicals. That is also loss. So during the storage and transportation, chemical hydrogen storage rather than the liquid hydrogen is is good. But the, in the conversion process, these are the also problem. So that means so still the, some people are just uh, insisting that the probably compressed the hydrogen is the best one. Liquidified hydrogen and chemical hydrogen storage definitely has uh, some issues in the conversion process and storage and transportation period. So probably, yeah, you know, the uh, compressed hydrogen, just to, just to put the hydrogen in the system at as as full as possible, right? So that is the, just the most simple technology to use pure hydrogen. Is it enough? Yes, it's enough, Professor. Thank you for your answer. Okay, thank you, Fatia, for the question. So we have two more uh, students who would like to us, but maybe we just limit it to one professor so because the time is yeah <laughs> so uh, maybe uh Fanes one, one, like... one more question i can yes. i can take it yeah yes Fanes, maybe okay thank you for the presentation professor uh, i want to ask as we know that there is a various catalyst used for hydrogen production especially through catalytic uh, processes uh, and it is often requires extensive, extensive research to find suitable catalysts for real world application, right? Uh, I just curious, is there any way to make this process more efficient with minimal effort? Uh, maybe you can share experience in your country. Thank for for you. what 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 reaction? Like make the process of research about catalysts used for hydrogen production more efficient. Yeah, oh. yeah. Hydrogen production, so which which reaction? Just the steam methane reforming or uh, uh, because like... you know the the, the catalyst depends on the uh, what kind of reaction is employed. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe about uh, methanol steam reforming. Methane, methane steam reforming. Methanol. Methanol steam Methanols. reforming. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> methanol, not methane. Yeah. In case of methanol steam reforming, you know the uh, we have to use the uh, in from in literature from literature, so the uh, most active meta in that reaction is the PT <laughs> platinum. So if we just use less amounts of the PT, yeah, that is the just the only way <laughs> to pursue the um, this, uh, this methanol steam methanol steam reforming catalyst. So probably how can we just reduce the amount of PT for that reaction? I mentioned that today we have to use the um, so metal support to interaction to get the higher activity using the small amounts of the noble metals. Yeah, that is the way, just one of the way, yeah, for just catalyst development. 
Y si no. Uh, ok, thank you for uh, your answer. Ok, thank you, Professor Sof. Thank you, Fanes, for the question and Professor Sof for the answer. Actually, I also wanted to ask something, but maybe next time, Professor Sof, <laughs> regarding the <laughs> LOHC, something like that. So because uh, nowadays our our research topics is about the methanol steam reforming and also for the hydrazine, hydrazine dehydrogenation process. So I would like to uh, know about the LOHC, but maybe because the time is almost yeah. up for you, maybe you have next schedule for the class. So before we wrap up the this class, Professor, so we have uh, Dr. Asep here as a head of department, Professor. So uh, maybe... Uh, Professor Young. Where is he? <laughs> Yeah, nice to meet you. I can nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. So maybe it's a, it's a uh... thank you for your your <laughs> just uh attendance in this Zoom Zoom session. Yes. Okay. My, my Pro, uh, uh, Dr. Asse probably will have like a uh, the uh, uh how can I say gratitude uh, uh give like a gratitude uh from the department uh side uh, because uh, you already uh, give your valuable time in your busy tight schedule so maybe i would like to give dr asep to have like a kind of uh, closing uh, uh, speech go ahead okay. uh, very efficient Good morning to each and every one of you. Thank you for still being with us today and also uh, last week. Uh, so on behalf of the Department of Chemistry, our student, our chemistry college, I would like to express my gratitude and sincere appreciation to our guest lecturer, uh, Professor Su Hyung Wong from Department of Chemical Engineering, Hanyang uh, University, who uh, has uh, presented a very interesting topic and very relevant and also very urgent uh, in the context of uh, climate change and clean energy entitled hydrogen energy and hydrogen uh, storage. Uh, so I'm sure the student um, has got uh, new knowledge, yeah, uh, broaden uh, knowledge and from the experience and also the research finding who has uh, presented by Professor uh, Su. Uh, hopefully, uh, after this, we still have uh, opportunity if we would like to uh, strengthen our collaboration with you, Professor, and your colleague from Hanyang University uh, in terms of uh, research collaboration as well as uh, academic uh, collaboration in the future. I just uh, would like to pass information that this year in our university, uh, we have a, a grant in the university level and also our faculty also have um, involvement in, in this grant. We call it the title is Net Zero Initiative, yeah, on the area of energy, um, conservation, and uh, green economy. So this morning, uh, I just pass the information of this guest lecture about uh, you, Professor Su Hyung Wong from Hanyang University. I said that uh, if our, our Center of Net Zero Initiative would like to invite Professor uh, Su Hyung uh, Wong uh, for uh, the topic of hydrogen energy and hydrogen storage, yeah, um, uh, they will uh, contact you. Uh, 
Okay, uh, once again, uh, thank you uh, very much for sharing your wisdom, experience, and knowledge uh, to all of us. Thank you very much, Professor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your kind remark. And also, Diane explained Diane, so what program is going on over there. Yeah, I think yeah, I'm I'm sure that yeah, I'm very open to everybody in this Zoom session uh, for the answers, uh, future collaboration. So, uh, you know, the answer, the, all the materials introduced uh, in the last week and also today are just uh, my research topics. I'm not now working on it. So that means the, um, if you have any any kind of the um, uh, any collaborative work for the um, your your part, and also if we I have the um, some of the um, just a grant for the um, just a collaborate internationally collaborate to work, I can I'm very open to discussion with you. Thank you for your attendance, your explanation. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Asep, and thank you, Professor So, for the time. So maybe before we wrap again the class, uh, we uh, hope hopefully you all still in this Zoom, uh, students. So uh, we have st still have thirty two students. So in this case, uh, yes. we we photo session? ah yes, photo session, uh, Dr. Asep. So uh, the students, please uh, open your video, and we will have like a uh, photo session the last photo session so let's uh please open your video camera a uh, video uh, yeah please you open your camera so we can take a picture okay so wait a minute wait wait uh, yes but Sorry, we I need to adjust the because in my in my slide it's only like three of us. <laughs> yeah, no. Masiswa pada kemana? Wait, wait. Okay. Ah, okay. Ayo, mahasiswa tampilkan wajahnya. Yo, mahasiswanya dinyalain uh, videonya. Ini ada Fredela, Nurli, Bulkia, Danila, Afifah, Mulyani, Panes, oke, okay, Panes sudah, Panes dua udah, silakan yang lain. So, uh, oke, okay. we will have like a photo session. We have uh, <laughs> only only seven, <laughs> only like Gak eight. Apa -apa. Gak apa -apa ya, Pak. Oke, okay, uh, I will count like three. Uh, the first slide, yes, one, two, three, and the second slide, please stay, one, two, three. Thank you very much. Now you can close your video. <laughs> and again, thank you very much, Professor So, for your you time to give much, a lecture. And, yeah, thank you so much for your invitation. And also, I, I want to see you sometime, to yeah. Professor Lika, Lidwan, yes. and probably where is the Indriati? Yeah, Dr. <laughs> Indriati, yeah. I want to hope the answer to you guys the end afterwards. Okay. Thank you yeah. very much, thank you. Professor. So see you again. Thank you. Thank you, so again. Thank you. you, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Okay.